Hi, this is Joe Maciars from A Tutoring Enterprises. Today I want to study uh, the quadratic equation, very specifically y equals x squared. We want to know how do we graph that. And I don't want to take you through the, uh, well I guess I am going to take you through the hard way to do it, but that's not our goal. Our goal is to figure out a better way to graph y equals x squared, something that's easier than what we would normally do. Let's go over to the graphing calculator and we'll get started. Uh, the, the equation we're trying to graph is y equals x squared. So this is what this looks like. And we get our nice pretty parabola here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to, or what you would normally do to graph this, is you would stick in values for x and figure out what the y values are. We call that making a table. Now I can't actually show you a table here, but I can show you some quick uh, calculations. Uh, suppose, for example, that I wanted to calculate negative 4, putting in negative 4 for x. Well, if we put negative 4 in there, we're going to be squaring it. And what are we going to get out? Well, we're going to get out uh, a negative times a negative, which is a positive, and then 4 times 4, which is 16. So we're going to get positive 16. So we should get 16 equals negative 4. Now, what you're seeing here right now is a little dot here at 0, 1. Why is that occurring? Well, that's occurring because it's using a logic uh, uh, basis here. You see it says this little equal 1 here. Equal 1 in uh, calculator or programming language means true. So it's just telling us that this is a true statement. Uh, you can see that if I put in 15, for example, it's going to come back and, and watch the either the value here or watch what happens to the point. If I hit return, you get equals 0, which is telling us it's false, and it's actually plotted at, at x equals 0. Uh, so let's go back and call it 16, and let's do the rest of these. Well, the rest of these are going to be more lines like this. So we're going to type in, for example, negative 3 squared. And, of course, that's going to be 9. Okay. And we just get another point on top of there. That's not really of interest to us. We're just going to keep on going. Do you know what the next one's going to be? It should be 4, right? So you're going to have negative 2 squared. 2 times 2 is 4. The negative times the negative is a positive. All right, we notice the 1s. That's telling us that we're getting it correct. Okay. Uh, the next one is 1 for negative 1 squared. Okay. And if you're thinking to yourself, boy, this is really tedious, you're exactly correct. Uh, if we square 0, we're going to get 0. Um, we now do see a pattern, though, because as we go to 1 squared, we get our 1 back, just like we had here. If we get uh, 2 squared, that's going to give us the 4. We had that earlier here. Can you guess what the next one's going to be? You said 9. That's right. That's 9. 3 squared will be 9. And then, of course, 4 squared oops, will be 16. Okay. Well, that was really painful. Um, this is not something that I enjoy doing, and I hope you did not enjoy doing it because this is a, a tedious way to do your graphing. Sometimes you have to do this in a given equation, but for quadratic equations, we have a better way. Um, now, I'm going to show you the way we can graph these very easily. Uh, in fact, you might suggest, well, wait a second. Can't you just type in something like xy equals negative 4, 16, like we had earlier, the first one? And if I do that, well, this graphing calculator apparently does not enjoy writing a point this way. It does it in a different way, and we'll do that in a minute. Uh, but even if we were doing these by hand, that would be really also very painful for this. So let's get rid of that, and we're going to do something a little different. We're going to bring in a new equation, and we're, I did this in a different video. We're going to use f of x, and f of x is a function form, but it's going to act a little bit like it's a, a parameter. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. We're replacing the y in the equation, y equals x squared, with f of x. And when I hit return, look what happens. I get this little green equal sign. It's not a box, a checkbox like this. So it's not trying to graph this at all. In fact, let's, uh, let's turn off our y equals x squared for a moment. So you can see nothing happened when I graphed that because uh, I haven't really graphed it. It's just def it's of in effect a definition. It's defining what we mean by f of x. Well, what we're going to do now? Let's go take a quick look at, uh, for example, if I were to use the uh, the uh, 
y equals f of, and let's put in a value, let's say negative 4, let's see what happens. Well, we get a straight line. Now, it's actually exactly what we're telling it to do, because if I put negative 4 into this x squared right here, well, that's like what we did up here. Negative 4 squared is 16, so the f of x will be a 16 for negative 4, and so this will be 16, and this would graph the line y equals 16. So it's working, it's just not giving us a point like we'd like. We'd like to see a point at negative 4, 16. So how are we going to do that? Well, I'm going to take a shortcut. I don't want to do just that point. I actually want to do a bunch of points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define another variable u, and I'm going to let it be a bunch of stuff. And that's what this, these uh, curly brackets are going to do for us. So we're going to let it be negative 4, and then we're going to let it be negative 3, and then negative 2, and then negative 1, and then 0, and then 1, and then 2, and then 3, and then 4. Just exactly like all the values that we have here, negative 4 through 4. All right. What we're going to do next is we're going to come up here and grab our... Um, parametric equation, our Cartesian curve. This is what earlier we said would make points for us if we got rid of the parameter stuff, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to get rid of all that parameter stuff. Go back here. We're going to put some spaces in there so we can easily see our equal sign. We're going to let the x be all the different u's in this little set notation here, and we're going to go ahead and let the y's be the f of u's. You starting to catch on what we're going to, what we're going to see here? Now this works pretty good except for one small detail. It doesn't just give me the points; it actually plots a polygon. But it's actually easy enough to get rid of. Once we've done that, we can click on this, come over to Inspector over here in the corner, the upper left-hand corner. Click on that, and we can click off of polygon, and we get rid of our lines. Now while we're here, let's go ahead and put in. Uh, fill in the points with a with a blue color instead of a white. And I, as I told you earlier, I always like to make my circles just a little bit smaller, or my points a little bit smaller. So now when we click off on that, there's our beautiful set of points. Now, that's pretty much even still doing it the hard way, especially when we're talking about graphing it by hand, because you don't have this little nifty uh, function notation that you can use when you graph it by hand. By hand, you have to actually come over to negative 4, go up 16 and plot a point, go over to negative 3, come up to 9 and plot a point, and so on down the line, and then you draw your nice smooth curve through this. Okay, well, we're done with these, so let me get rid of these and get these out of the picture here. All right, now, to understand what we're going to do, I'm actually going to turn the line back on. We're going to keep the points up there for a second. But I've gone ahead and, ahead of time, put in a bunch of parameterized equations that are going to highlight what we're going to do. We're going to start here, down here at the vertex. And what I'm going to do is first click on this just to show you what it's going to do first off. And you might have some trouble seeing it, but you should see a little red line here from 0, 0 to 1, 0. Okay? Now, how is that occurring? Well, this is one of the times we're actually using the parameterization. We're telling it to graph a line, and we're doing that by setting, telling it to take y and keep y at 0. And if you notice, that's what's happening. y is 0. And then we're telling it, hey, we're going to vary the x. We're going to let that x vary as t. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to tell it that t is going to go from 1, oh, sorry, from 0 to 1. And that's, so that's what it's doing. The x value goes from 0 to 1, and so it's actually plotting that line. So, <clears throat> I want you to notice something that's going to happen. When we go from this point to this point, look what happens. I go over 1, and we can see that from subtracting this. 1 minus 0. And then we go up 1. So over 1, up 1. And again, we can see from 1 to 0. Now on this one, I let the x equal 1, so that's staying constant. And I let the y be my t variable going from 0 to 1. So over 1, up 1, over 1, up 3. Look at that, 4 minus 1. We're going to go over 1 again, 3 minus 2, so that's 1, over 1. 
And then we're going to go up 9 minus 4, 5. Again, over 1. And then finally, 16 minus 9. How much is that? 7. Look at it. Over 1, up 1. Over 1, up 3. Let's click off here. Over 1, up 1. Over 1, up 3. Over 1, up 5. Over 1, up 7. 1, 3, 5, 7. Can you guess what the next one is? Yes, these are the odd numbers. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, so on down the line. When our a value, remember we had y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, or in vertex form we had y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. Well, the a, when the a is 1, you're going to see this pattern associated with the points. And if you know that pattern, you're going to be able to graph all those points very easily. So I guess with the end of this, what I'm going to say, let me shut this down, is that we've just discovered the 1, 3, 5, 7, dot, dot, dot pattern. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to use this pattern and the knowledge of the vertex to graph any parabola that either opens up or down. But that's it for today. I just wanted to get this pattern to you, so you might title this video the 1357 pattern. Okay. All right, well, that's it for the video today. Please check out the next one. Uh, let's get over to the little final screen. This has been A Tutoring Enterprises, and we've uh, been looking at y equals x squared from the quadratic equation and how to graph that. Uh, the business name is A Tutoring Enterprises, and my name is Joe Maciars. My website is at www.tutent, that says in tutoring enterprises.com. The email is at tutent at neb.rr.com, and you can call me at 402 421 3536. I uh, work with students online and in person. Uh, if you're anywhere other than in Lincoln, Nebraska, please give me a call, and uh, we'll set up some time. and give you a hand. I hope this has been a very helpful video to you. Uh, check out the next one. As I said, we're going to look at um, what happens when a is not equal to 1 and how we can graph any equation then just by simply knowing the a value and the vertex. Thanks for watching.